Hello everyone. Today let's discuss on B3. So the contents which we will be covering are what is a B3, why do we need a B3, how to construct a B3, operations on B3, runtime analysis and at last applications of B3. Excited right? So let's start. What is a B3? Let's start from the basics. We all know that the time required to access data should be as low as possible. For example, if you click on a movie file, you can't wait hours for the data to be bought from secondary memory to primary memory and then watch the movie, right? It should be instant. As soon as you click, it should play. In order to do that, data should be properly organized and retrieved. For that, we require certain algorithms, file structures or data structures. B3 is a tree data structure that keeps data sorted. It is a self-balancing search tree which allows insertion, deletion, and search in logarithm time. Good, you have taken your first step. Now you know what is a B tree. Next, we need to know why do we use a B tree. Say that all your data are stored in secondary memory. For the corresponding data, you have indices in another pointer called index. Why do we need index? Because it helps us to identify data more easily. Imagine you have to search a particular chapter in a book. If you don't have an index page in your book, it's hard to find the exact chapter. Whereas, if you have an index present in your book, you can precisely open that chapter, right? This is how our index pointer also works. Normally, this index pointer consists of a key value and a record pointer. Key value is the basis to do your search. It's a unique number. Example, if a college needs to search a student, the key value for the college to perform the search will be the student's USN. Next, the record pointer points to the corresponding data in secondary memory. It's like page number given in the index of the book which corresponds to a chapter. Now, say this index becomes too large, then what do we do? We just break it down, converting the index into multi level indices. Now the problem is the insertion and deletion. If we insert something in secondary memory, all the indices should be updated. Deletion also follows the same term. In order to deal with this problem, we use tree data structure, especially balance tree. So this B tree data structure are used to form indices which point to secondary memory. Very good. Now you know why do we need a B tree. Now let's learn how to construct a habitary. In order to start constructing, you need to know some few basics. First is the block pointer, sometimes also known as tree pointers. This points to the next node, that is its child node. Next, order of a B tree. This is the maximum number of children each node can contain. Learning this table is also very necessary. It shows the maximum and minimum number of children a root and an intermediate can have. A root node can have a maximum of p children where p is the order of the tree and a minimum of two children. Intermediate node also can have the same number of maximum children whereas the minimum is p by two. Next. Number of keys is the node is order of tree minus 1. Now let's see a basic example given order of tree is 4. Since order is 4, the number of block pointer is also 4 which is equal to the number of children and a key value of each node can contain 1 less than the order that is 3. Next let's construct a B tree for your better understanding. Given construct a B tree of order 3, keys are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So P is equal to 3, that is order. K e is equal to P minus 1, which is 2. Number of children is 3. Let's do it step by step. Step 1 is the insertion. We need to insert 1 into a node. Bit easy, right? Step 2 is also insertion. It is inserting 2 beside 1. Since it has two children, so two can be beside one. 
Now in step 3, 3 comes in, but there is no space for 3. So what we need to do is to perform a split. We need to split the middle element here too and the other elements become the children of the split element. Next 4 comes in which is greater than 2. So it goes to the right of 2 and takes place beside 3. Observe this step carefully. 5 is greater than 2 goes to right but has no space. So what do we do when we have no space is split sending 4 upwards where there is place beside 2 and a new child 5 is formed. Next 6 comes in which is greater than 4 goes right takes place beside 5. Now watch this final step which is very interesting. 7 comes goes to the right of 4 but has no space. So what do we perform? Split. But the parent node is also full. So we need to perform split operation for parent node also. Sending the middle element upwards. This is the result. This is how we construct a B-tree which is also an insertion operation. Now you know how to construct a battery. Now let's see the operations that can be done on battery. There are three basic operations. They are insertion, searching, deletion. Let's study them one by one. First insertion operation. We have already learned this. Remember the example given previously that is to insert 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 into a battery of order 3. That is insertion operation. Let's not go into that again. Next operation is search. Searching in a battery is similar to binary tree. If the element is small, go to left. If it is large, go to right. Let's take an example. Say, in this battery, we need to find the element 14. 14 is less than 17, so we go to left of 17. And now the 14 is greater greater than 8 so we go to the right child of 8 in the leaf node we first see 12 14 is greater than 12 we go to the right we find now let's study the last and the most interesting operation that is deletion deletion can be done in four cases case one the record is in terminal node having key value greater than minimum key value this means that a given binary tree of order 5 minimum key value can be calculated by p by 2 minus 1 so it is 5 by 2 is equal to 2.5 but we need the ceiling value of 2.5 that is the value which is greater than 2.5 and 3 minus 1 is equal to 2 which means each node should have minimum of 2 keys now observe the node having value 4 5 6 it is a terminal node and has three keys that is one greater than the minimum number of keys and if we delete this nothing happens we can directly delete this it does not violate our minimum key value rule so this type of deletion is pretty simple now let's see case 2 deletion in internal node having key value less than minimum key value and successor having key value more than minimum don't worry I will explain this. Observe the video. Now suppose we need to delete 33. It is in internal node and s yes, the order of tree is p is equal to 3. The minimum key value here is 1. If we delete the key here, the node has only one key that is the exactly number of minimum keys and successor node which are 31 and 32 has two keys which is one more than the minimum number of keys value. For deletion in this type of case, what happens is that the parent takes one of its child and partners with it. Here, 30 takes 32 and partners with it. Observe no condition is violated. Every leaf node has minimum key value and this is how deletion is done in case 2. Now let's see case 3. Deleting record from terminal node having record less than minimum number of keys. Suppose this is the B tree and we need to delete 2 the minimum number of keys for this tree is 2 that is each node should have a minimum of 2 keys and if we delete 2 the node will have only one key so in these cases what a child does is it looks at parent 
and parent looks at other child the other child has three keys so the parent joins one forming one tree and the child phi is brought up forming parent this is how deletion is done in case 3 the last case in deletion is and deleting an entire internal node see this binary tree and if we need to delete 10 5 and 15 will be left with no parent so we should merge 20 and 35 forming a new parent and we have to 5 and 15 as well forming a single node with it a new parent 20 let's take another example Here we need to delete 7, then what will you do? When you delete 7, what you should do is you should merge the predecessors and successors of 7 forming a new child node. It's that simple. These are all the operations on B tree. Excellent. Now you have known how operations can be done on B tree. Now let's analyze the runtime of B tree. Here we have two trees. One, one is the best case and other is the worst case. And both the trees are of order 3. Observe that the worst case tree, each non-leaf node has one key. And in best case, best case tree, each non-leaf node has two items. Look at the best case. Since there are more keys, there are more branching. And for more branching, we can store more data. See that in worst case, we have 8 items and height 2. For best case, the height remains the same but has 26 items. Now it is clear from this example that in best case, the tree can hold more keys in shorter height and in the worst case, the tree can hold more number of keys. It can hold. So if the number of keys increases, the height increases. As the height increases, runtime also increases. Now at last, we will see the applications of B tree. B tree is used to index the data and provide fast access to the actual data stored in the disk. Searching an unindexed and unsorted database containing n key value need O of n runtime. In worst case, which means we need to visit each and every node once but we but if we use b tree to index this data it will be searched in o log n runtime in worst case now you have learned everything about b tree please do watch video again if we don't make it to few points thank you